Here are today's top stories. President Duterte calls for inclusive and sustainable growth as he joins the ASEAN leaders gathering in Bali, Indonesia. The COMELEC reminds candidates and their supporters to behave as the filing of certificates of candidacy opens Thursday. Malacanang thanks the Senate for the speedy passage of the Universal Health Care Bill. And millennials open a whole new market for the local coffee industry. Good day. I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. President Rodrigo Duterte is in Bali, Indonesia to participate in the ASEAN Leaders Gathering. The meeting aims to show to the world that ASEAN is united and a potent force in the world arena. Rom Dulfo has the story. President Rodrigo Duterte arrived in Bali, Indonesia on Wednesday for the ASEAN Leaders Gathering upon the invitation of Indonesian President Joko Widodo. The president hopes to highlight the need to sustain inclusive and sustainable growth and development for all through stronger cooperation and greater security and stability. The inaugural ASEAN Leaders Gathering is a special meeting with International Monetary Fund Managing Director Christine Lagarde, World Bank President Jim Yong Kim, and UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. It will showcase the ASEAN leadership and solid cooperation in managing the region's economic growth as well as their SDG's achievements. The meeting is co-chaired by Widodo and Prime Minister Lee Shen Long of Singapore as chair of ASEAN 2018. The president will meet with ASEAN leaders on the sidelines of the gathering to discuss bilateral issues of mutual importance. The DFA earlier said Duterte will have a chance to personally turn over the Philippines' assistance to earthquake and tsunami victims in central Sulawesi to President Widodo. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dulfo. The House of Representatives has recommitted the draft federal charter for amendments, particularly the provision on the succession to the presidency. The draft charter has a provision that skips over the vice president in the line of succession to the presidency and places it on the shoulders of the Senate president during transition. The charter, authored by House Speaker Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo and 21 other legislators, proposes presidential bicameral federal system of government, was sponsored before the plenary on Monday afternoon. House Constitutional Amendments Committee Chairman Vicente Veloso meanwhile said it is unfair to claim that this is designed to address the political concerns of Speaker Arroyo. He said the provision would address the uncertainty in the vice presidency amid the ongoing electoral protest of former Senator Bongbong Marcos against sitting Vice President Lenny Robredo. As the filing for certificates of candidacy opens at the Commission on Elections or COMELEC, re-electionist Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel III and singer Freddy Aguilar are among the early birds to file their COC Thursday morning. Pimentel said he decided to file his COC at the first hour of the filing period to get the matter out of his mind and focus on his wedding set for next week. Pimentel, who is running under the administration party PDP Laban, said that he is seeking re-election since he has unfinished legislative business to be pursued in the Senate. Singer Ferdinand Freddy Aguilar, a known supporter of President Rodrigo Duterte, is also running under PDP Laban. Aguilar said that after 40 years, he decided to run because he was convinced to run by ordinary people because his songs reflect his personal advocacies. Meanwhile, in an effort to promote clean and honest elections, the Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, appeals to aspirants to act orderly and dignified as they file their certificates of candidacy starting Thursday. COMELEC spokesperson James Jimenez reminds aspirants not to turn the process into a circus of supporters, noting that the COC filing period is often marked with a fiesta-like atmosphere. Jimenez said they will also control the number of people that would be allowed to enter the Comelec main office at the Palacio del Gobernador in Intramuros, Manila. The filing of COCs is set to run from October 11 to October 17. Presidential Legal Counsel Sal Panelo returns as President Duterte's spokesperson starting on Monday. 
Panelo confirms his appointment following the announcement made by Special Assistant to the President Bongo in Indonesia. He will continue his job as legal counsel along with his new designation. Panelo previously held the post when Duterte assumed office in 2016. President Rodrigo Duterte has appointed Court of Appeals Justice Ramon Paul Hernando as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court or SC. Special Assistant to the President Bongo said Hernando will take the post vacated by former SC Associate Justice and now Ombudsman Samuel Martires. Hernando was earlier one of the candidates in the shortlist to replace SC Associate Justice Presbyterio Velasco Jr., who retired last August. Goss said Duterte has also appointed regional trial court judges Evelyn Arellano Morales and Loida Posadas Cahulugan as Associate Justices of the Court of Appeals. The General Santos City Government has lifted the citywide curfew as it downgraded the alert level in the area due to the improved security situation. City Mayor Ronel Rivera decided to lower the security alert from level 4 to level 3 following an assessment by the police, Joint Task Force Gensan and other intelligence and law enforcement units. Authorities reported that the security threats have so far softened in the city as well as the whole Soksarjan region. The Crisis Committee raised the alert status following the bomb blast near the National Highway in Barangay Apopong last September 16, which left eight people wounded. Police arrested the alleged primary suspect three days after the blast and filed charges against 18 others. Meanwhile, increased police visibility will continue within the city while public is encouraged to coordinate with the city police and join task force Gensan. Still to come, Malacanang thanks the Senate for the speedy passage of the Universal Health Care Bill. The Davao City government seeks to demolish resorts built in conservation and disaster-prone areas. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. Rice supply. Ito po, alam naman po natin, it's a controversial topic, pero talagang may contributory effect din po ito. Uh, NFA was not able to buy enough palay during the previous harvest season, pero nag na po yung next harvest season ngayon. No? And despite importation, the rice supply still decreased. Nagka-problema rin po sa unloading. These reflect underlying issues in our rice policy. Kung titingnan po natin, Philippine, the Philippines or, or Filipinos spend a lot more, ito pong blue line, on rice per kilo than our neighbors in Thailand and Vietnam. Kahit po sa Pakistan. No? So if you look at that, talagang uh, meron po tayong issues pagdating sa presyo ng bigas. So, isa po sa mga uh, pinagkaisahan ng economic managers ay uh, ipaglaban po at uh, i-advocate ang rice tarification na nasa Senado na po ngayon. What are the key provisions of rice tarification? The NFA mandate should be to make sure we have uh, enough emergency buffer stock and possibly logistics to make sure that uh, this buffer stock gets to where it's needed. Gawing mas maluwag ang pag-angkat ng bigas, gawin po nating taripa. Nakaset po sa level na yung makokolekta po nating taripa ay magagamit po natin sa kapakanan ng ating mga magsasaka para mas maging productive or makapag-shift sa higher value crops. Ang problema po kasi sa quantitative restriction, yung quota po, ay based po yan sa li import license. Yung NFA lang po ang nakakabigay ng import license. Ang nangyayari po dyan, ang nakikinabang, ay ang may license lamang. Under a tariff regime, yung taripa po will be collected from anyone who wants to import rice, and that money will be used to support our farmers. Ano po yung magiging impact nito? Bababa, bababa po yung inflation, mga estimates po ay galing sa PIDs, at saka sa NEDA, at saka sa uh, Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas. At bababa po ang presyo ng bigas between 2 to 7 pesos depending on what market in the country we are looking at. At maging mas competitive po ang manufacturing dahil ang mga pressure para taasan ang minimum wage ay uh, bababa ng konti dahil 
mas magiging affordable ang staple. And for uh, low-income families, rice is around 20% of their budget. Malacanang has thanked the Senate for passing the Universal Health Care Bill, which aims to give all-inclusive health coverage for Filipinos. Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque described the measure as groundbreaking since it allows the automatic inclusion of all Filipinos into the National Health Insurance Program. Roque said the administration's prioritization of the UHC bill is part of its commitment to provide the marginalized and disadvantaged with sufficient and better health care services. In his State of the Nation address last July, Duterte endorsed the UHC bill as among his priority measures. The House passed its version of the landmark measure in September 2017. Under the bill, all Filipino citizens, including overseas Filipino workers, will automatically be enrolled into PhilHealth as contributors. PhilHealth coverage would also be expanded to include a free consultation fees, laboratory tests, and other diagnostic services. An ING Bank report states that unimpeded rice importation may slow down the rise of Philippines' inflation rate as it will immediately address supply issues in the market. The report said President Rodrigo Duterte's decision to greenlight liberalized importation of rice will help temper food inflation. The report notes that rice accounts for 9% of the consumer price index basket and controlling it could help lower overall inflation and anchor expectations in the coming months. President Duterte earlier approved the unimpended importation of rice where anyone who can afford to import, pays tariffs, and comply with the requirements will be allowed to do so. Other measures undertaken to reduce inflation are the reduction of farm gate and retail prices, removal of non-tariff barriers on imported agricultural goods, and the immediate release of about 230,000 metric tons of rice in the NFA warehouses. The Department of Information and Communications Technology refutes allegations that the selection process for the country's third telco player is a mere money-making scheme. Miguel Hill has the story. The Department of Information and Communications Technology has accused third telco aspirant Now Telecom of delaying the selection process for the new major player in the local telecommunications industry. Now Telecom filed a case against the National Telecommunications Commission as it protests the charging of security fees which it branded as money-making schemes imposed against the third telco. DICT Acting Secretary Eliseo Rio Jr. said the third telco must not only be technically capable but should also have the financial muscle to compete with current telecom giants Globe and Smart. Rio noted that the securities and fees required are consistent with the bidding and procurement processes and are even lower than those set by the Government Procurement Reform Act. Now Telecom filed the case before the Manila Regional Trial Court on October 8, the same day they bought the bidding documents. The firm said it would prefer that President Rodrigo Duterte receives all the bidding documents on November 7, also the date for the opening of bids and for him to decide on the third telco player. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. The Davao City government plans to demolish resorts that were found to be built in conservation and disaster-prone areas. A task group from the Mines and Geosciences Bureau and the local government is set to inspect all resorts in Davao City, particularly in the Marilog district. City Administrator Zulieka Lopez said they expect the results of the inspection by the last week of October. The government issued a cease and desist order against some 30 inland resorts operating in Marilog. The resorts are reportedly operating illegally in landslide-prone and conservation areas. Lopez earlier said they will look into the hazardous zones with the MGB to see if mitigating measures can be done. In an effort to improve food security, President Rodrigo Duterte has committed some 40 billion pesos for the establishment of a solar-powered irrigation system in the Philippines in the next three years. 
During the Food Security Summit Visayas Cluster in Iloilo City, Agriculture Secretary Emmanuel Piñol said construction is ongoing for some 160 small river systems in various parts of the country. The solar-powered system will be used to irrigate 500,000 hectares of new rice farms. Before the year ends, Iloilo City is expected to groundbreak its 11 billion peso Halau River multipurpose project. Once completed, the project is expected to irrigate some 9,500 hectares of new areas and the rehabilitation of over 22,300 hectares. Meanwhile, Pinol encouraged farmers to avail of the Department of Agriculture's Productivity Loan Easy Access, where farmers can avail of loans up to 50,000 pesos per hectare. Pinol was also presented a copy of the Food Security Plan of the Visayas Cluster that will be integrated in his proposed National Food Security Act of 2020. Up next, Filipina golfer Yuko Sasso takes second place in the women's golf event at the Youth Olympic Games. Millennials open a whole new market for the local coffee industry. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. One can never really say that he has traveled the north without passing through Pangasinan in Region 1. In 2019, locals and tourists will experience seamless travel in the province with the completion of the new Urdaneta City Bypass Road. The four-lane project of the Department of Public Works and Highways with a total length of 7.173 kilometers, will decongest traffic along the Poblacion section of the city where government institution and establishment are located. Urdaneta City Bypass Road Project includes the construction of three bridges and will traverse eight barangays starting from Barangay Nan Kayasan, Santo Domingo, Santa Lucia, Nan Kamaliran East, Mabanugbog, San Vicente, Camantiles, to Anonas. In addition to improving economic growth of the province, the bypass road will also reduce travel time as it is connected to four key inter-regional roads, Manila North Road, Urdaneta Dagupan Road, Urdaneta Manawag Road, and Tarlac Pangasinan La Union Expressway. Urdaneta City Bypass Road will surely provide a better travel experience for travelers going to Ilocos Region, Central Luzon, and Metro Manila. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, or PDEA, has filed multiple murder and frustrated murder charges against eight suspects in the ambush that killed at least five agents in Lanao del Sur. Based on the investigation of the Police Regional Office, ARMM, the suspects are relatives of a drug personality identified as Kumayog Makapagal, who was killed in a by-bus operation in Marawi City on August 8. Police are looking into revenge as the motive for the crime. Investigators also tagged Oscar Kapal Gandawali, a relative of Makapagal who was present when he was killed as the mastermind. The PNP and AFP are currently working on locating the suspects. A survey by dating app Tinder show that most American millennials prefer to stay single. The survey found 72% of more than 1,000 single American youth aged 18 to 25 have made a conscious decision to stay single for a period of time. As high as 81% of these individuals see being single as beneficial in ways beyond just their love lives. More than half said other young single people were more open to new experiences and that they view themselves as more fun due to their single status. Tinder relationship expert Darcy Sterling says the trend in the past was for the youth to aim for a degree, a career, and a family that they would raise to undergo the same cycle. However, millennials at present get to invest more time in careers, social lives, and personal time when single. 
Another Filipina athlete golfer, Yuka Sasso, is making the country proud in the ongoing 2018 Youth Olympic Games for landing second place. The Filipina Japanese Sasso had to contend with the wind at the Hurlingham Club in Buenos Aires as she bogeyed six holes to stay two shots behind leader Alicia Nobilio of Italy. The Asia Games champion miscalculated three holes on the front nine and another three coming home, but her five birdies, including back-to-back -back efforts after a par on the par three number 12, was enough to keep her within striking distance. Sasso shared second place with Maria Fernanda Martinez of Mexico, Emil Weveras of Norway, Grace Kim of Australia, and Ho Yu Wan of Chinese Taipei. Carl Jano Corpus, on the other hand, shared fifth place in men's individual play. The Filipino was two strokes behind the leaders after he made several birdies. Akshay Bhatia of the United States, Van Chai Luang Ling Nikul of Thailand, Carl Billips of Australia, and Andre Romano of Italy shared the lead. Millennials of the Philippines have incorporated coffee drinking as part of their lifestyle. However, much of the coffee consumed locally is imported. The Department of Agriculture hopes to change that by promoting high-quality local coffee variants. More on this from Maricor Zapata. Coffee consumption in the country has been surging. Coffee shops are awake even at night as millennials are willing to shell out 100 pesos just for a cup of coffee. Agriculture Under Secretary Evelyn Lavinia says millennials are now populating the Philippine coffee scape. They understand their coffee, be it traditional, plain, brewed, espresso, or blended. As such, Lavinia urges local coffee growers to rise and shine. She notes that local coffee shops source out about 95% of their Arabica coffee abroad. Experts say if local growers could not fill up the rising demand for coffee, they could at least make up in terms of quality. Helen Martinez, Filmex Supervising Science Research Specialist, said the country's coffee industry must at least gear up to capture the local market, especially the emerging millennial sector and the foreign tourists. Martinez says 60 to 70 percent of coffee production in the Philippines comes from the small farmers. Meanwhile, the coffee industry in Cordillera is pushing for its Arabica type of coffee, which is grown in high altitudes, making its quality among the best. DA Cordillera is now encouraging farmers to plant more coffee trees together with their other major crops. For post-harvest, the DA also provides equipment to cooperatives and organizations that consolidate their backyard produce so they could process the beans from the removal of the skin, drying, roasting, grinding, down to packaging. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Maricor Zapata. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's top stories. President Duterte calls for inclusive and sustainable growth as he joins the ASEAN leaders gathering in Bali, Indonesia. Re-election is Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel III and singer Freddy Aguilar are among the early birds to file their COC Thursday morning. Malacanang thanks the Senate for the speedy passage of the Universal Health Care Bill. And millennials open a whole new market for the local coffee industry.
Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And remember, traffic is an everyday reality. What makes it worse is when we complain too much about it. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.